Good morning, DMV. You are tuned into the Kick Back with me, your host, Diamond B. Frazier. We are actually broadcasting live from Dragon Radio at Howard Community College. Y'all know I don't come by myself, so I got somebody with me today. She is looking <laughs> fine as I have <laughs> I got with me Destiny the Chef. How you doing, girl? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here with you. I'm happy that you're here with me. Yes. So this girl, she is from Richmond, Virginia, but yes. she now resides in the A. And, you know, whenever we think of the DMV, we always put together D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. But you can define somebody from D.C., you can define somebody from Maryland, but I'm not going to lie. What is a person from Virginia? How do they walk? How do they talk? How do they <laughs> act? Because you be repping Richmond, what is it, 804? Yeah, Yes, 804. girl, I look, I be paying attention to be repping 804 because, look, I ain't from Virginia, I don't know. But what's that about? Um, I mean, honestly, I feel like we're our own little entity. I feel like it's like a little melting pot. Like, um, I feel like a lot of people are um influenced by so many different things, whether it's um like um three six mafia, whether it's Jay Z, like we just pull from everywhere. We're just like I feel like we're just um, we have the backpackers, we have the the trap rappers, we mm-hmm. have a little bit of everything. So I feel like it's just a little melting pot, you know. I feel like we 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 kind of take from just the hip hop culture period. Okay. So it's like not one type of thing. It's like you can't really pinpoint people from Richmond because it's like it's so many different types of people. Like mm-hmm. we got family, people got family from New York, family from Georgia. So it's yeah. like we just take a little bit from everybody and then we just kind of mold it into our own little thing so that's richmond just by itself or virginia as a whole is like that because my thing is like if i'm looking at a person that's coming from virginia Mm -hmm. do i look at them and be like girl you from virginia or boy you from virginia not on no shade type stuff but do they have a defined look um i think (laughs) richmond yeah, I think they do have a look. Like, musically, I was talking about musically. Oh, okay. But, okay. like, as far as the look, it is a certain type of look. But I never got in. I, well, in high school, I did. But as an adult, I kind of just, you know, I feel like I just found who I was. You know, I, I didn't try to fit in the old, like, everybody wearing. Because in Richmond, like, a lot of people wear, like, the Chanel's or, the, like, frames is, like, the thing in oh. Richmond. A lot of people okay. wore Kooji, like a lot of Jordans, like, you know, okay. it's about being super flashy. Like me, I just always had my own, like, especially after high school, because, you know, everybody kind of want to, you know, fit in. Mm-hmm. Like, but after that, like, I just did me like I, I found stuff that I like that fit my style, that fit who I was. and yeah. Exactly. Do you have like a lingo from Richmond? Like I, I mean, see, I don't hear, I don't, I don't hear myself. But people was like, you gotta, you talk a certain way. I don't hear it because I'm from Richmond. But I mean, certain things that when I'm around other people, especially in Atlanta, mm. then I, I'm like, okay, I hear like the different, you know, lingo. Like we, you know, we say shoddy or you know, um, little stuff like I don't know. We say little stuff like I know y'all say. Well, I know people from uh, not y'all, but people I know from DC be like young or yeah, mo. like, mo, like, we, like don't kill. Say, we don't say stuff like no. Y'all just just a just the regular n word. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she, she filtered that below. We look, we could go back and edit that joint in. So, yeah, I don't know. So I just was trying to keep it cool. Good, keep, keep it, it cool. Clean. I like that. It's easy to edit. Look. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to get into a little segment. It's called With It or Quit It. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you statements or questions. You got to tell me if you with it, that means you agree, or you quit it. Like, bro, what is you talking about? But you also have to respond to it, whatever it is. Like, it might be somebody asking a question, so it's just your opinion. So you ready? Okay, okay. All right, so pay attention. I'm going to read it once. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. All right, so it says, I'm a teen girl trying to make sense of the world. My neighbors, wives, and kids were shot and killed because they owed money to the wrong people. Man was murdered with a screwdriver outside of my apartment. My dad was stabbed by my brother, blah, blah, blah. Is it normal to have such so much violence in my life, or are people really just this bad? So you with it, or you quit it like, yeah, that's normal, or nah, girl, what you doing? You talking about do I feel like is normal in the world or where I'm from? Either one. Mm. We're going to make this about you. Where you from? Okay. 
I mean, honestly, sadly, it is normal from where I'm from. Where I'm from. Like, and that's one of the reasons why I knew I had to leave, too, because people was dying, like, in Virginia. In Richmond, Virginia. Like it's wow. like I said, it's a whole different entity. Virginia is a beautiful place. Mm-hmm. Richmond is rough. You know, so and that's why I tell people like it don't like it doesn't matter how you look, it doesn't matter about your social status. Like people look at me like, Oh, you're so pretty, like how do mm-hmm. you rap so because life don't care about how pretty you are. Life that don't care true. about your social status or how many friends you got on Facebook or Instagram. Life will hit you. So, like, that's what I tell people. Like, just because you look a certain way surfacely doesn't mean you don't have pain or haven't been through anything. Like, so, and that's what that's mm-hmm. why I try to, you know, talk about the real to let people know it doesn't matter how you look. People yeah. go through pain every day. So, she's talking about she didn't see somebody get stabbed with a screwdriver and the fall and you know crazy stuff so have you actually seen something like that firsthand not watch it on the news but you seen like oh shoot like you know how they be looking out the window like bro I, y'all see this have you i seen right right when i was going to my grandmother's house i it's like a stop sign right before you go down her dead end and i stopped at the little stop sign and i seen mm-hmm. two people shooting at each other like right in front of me and serious? i me and my best friend was sitting in the car and we was lucky that we just stopped because i mean usually you know you might stop and just keep, keep going, going but we kind of yeah. stopped and seen and they was around each other's car and just shooting at each other like are you serious yeah I'm dead serious. Like, Dang, you know, this not good, but, like, don't sleep on Richmond, Virginia. I didn't even know. Like, this is <laughs> oh, tight that yeah, I'm yeah. actually hearing from somebody that's actually from there. Yeah, it's yeah, it's rough. Like, when, most people, when they be like, when, when I be like, I'm from Richmond, but like, oh, snap, like, you from Richmond? For real? Yeah. Look, they not in the background. I ain't know nothing about Richmond. You knew about Richmond? The boy said, all right, you ain't know nothing about Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let me get into this next one. Is it normal that I'm suicidal but I'm afraid to die. I'm suicidal, but I am afraid to die because I don't know what happens after death. Life sucks and I want to end it, but I'm scared. What would you call someone who is suicidal but afraid to die? Is there a specific term for that? <clears throat> um, <laughs> you asked me some deep stuff. Ooh. Girl, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, like for me, I'm mm-hmm. going to say for me, I'm super spiritual, so, like, honestly, I would tell that person, like, you need to, like, honestly f- build a relationship with God because, mm-hmm. honestly, for me, I'm not afraid. I, I mean, I'm, I want to live, but I'm not afraid of that because I feel like it's life after death, and I feel like my with my spirit, mm-hmm. you know, and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I'm here for a purpose. I feel like. Every day I'm living on my purpose, and God is showing me every day, like, why I'm here. You know, I mm-hmm. feel like he's using me, so I'm not afraid of that, but I I do appreciate my life. Have you ever had suicidal thoughts, like, just, like, maybe, not on no, like, a long-term depression, but just maybe one day in your room, like, I don't even need to be here. Like, no, like what am I here for? Definitely. Um, I mean, um, me... At like around 13, um, was I got diagnosed with that? Well, like 12, 13, got diagnosed with diabetes, and I didn't know like how you know rough it really was. Like, I didn't know, like, a lot of people are not you know um, knowledgeable of what diabetes is or how severe you know it's one of the most deadly diseases, like, Mm -hmm. and especially in an African American you know community. And I didn't know, like, I I, my um, when I went to the doctor, they told me, and I kind of laughed like, "Oh, okay." Like, yeah. and my dad was crying, and I'm like, "What did you crying for?" It when I when I seen how severe and everything that I've been through up until like that the point I'm um at now, like mm-hmm. you know, with almost losing my life, you know, having a heart attack at 17, like wow, it I didn't realize I was depressed, like. Because it was hard, you know, mm-hmm. being a 13 year old, you got to I got to use needles three times a day, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying to to live, you know, yeah. and sometimes not even to be able to afford my medicine, you know, doing music and trying to keep up with my health. Like, yeah, so definitely. So and I'm not going to lie, because I am in that spectrum, too, where I'm not knowledgeable about diabetes, because the way I look at it as. You either I guess too much sugar or not enough sugar, and then it's usually people that are I don't even know to be honest Mm -hmm. so can you describe like 
why your father had mm-hmm. that moment where he was really upset about it. Like, what what does it mean for a person who has diabetes? Uh, well, I feel like on the outside of it, what, what other people look at it is like death. People, because everybody that I, that ha- has had it in my family has died. Mm-hmm. So I feel like people on the outside who are not knowledgeable of it look at it as like a death sentence. Like, oh, my God, she's going to die, mm-hmm. you know. And I feel like the only way you're going to die is if you don't take care of yourself. Like if you if you don't eat properly, if you don't exercise, if you are just if you just don't care, like if you Mm -hmm. just do everything that you was doing before you got diagnosed, then you are going to die. But if you choose to look at it like me, I feel like it saved my life in a way because I'm. I'm more health conscious. I, you know, try to exercise. I drink a lot of water I I eat mm-hmm. you know try to eat a lot of veggies and you know drink smoothies and just do little Girl, stuff like I've been on that lately yeah so like honestly it's made me more health conscious and you know and um wanting to take better care and wanting to do research on like ways that you can naturally like you know little holistic ways that you can take care of yourself not just always taking medicine or you know but like eating the right types of foods to make you know to give you those nutrients that you need to feel healthy and to feel energetic so exactly. I feel like in a way it saved my life so I always try to look at the bright side of things now that I'm older like okay at first I could oh my gosh I got this why yeah. me but I feel like God is using me because he's showing me and helping me show other people. Like Exactly, because you, know. you are in a position now where you can reach out to more people. Exactly. And somebody that have diabetes, they probably thinking the same thing. Like, nobody really knows what I experience or what I go through. They just look at it, you know, kind of how you did to begin with where, right. okay, I have diabetes. Right. Okay. And then people see me take shots and they like, oh, my gosh, I can never exactly, do that. Yeah. You don't know. And that's the thing. Like, I tell people, you don't never know what you can do until you don't have any other option. Mm-hmm. And that's how my life has been. Like, I tell people, like, my one of my, like, real-life slogans is I share my struggle so so you can, you know, understand my strength. Like, mm-hmm. I share that because I want you to see, like, I want you to be inspired by my strength. I want you to be inspired the fact that, dang, like, she doing all of this stuff, but on the back end of everything, she going through all of this stuff too. Exactly. You know, so that's why I talk about stuff because... It's no excuse it's, to stop. Exactly. And that's what I want people to see. You don't have to, oh, look perfect or look like your life is great to actually be doing something to impact other people. Mm-hmm. That's good. So we're going to get into this last one real quick. It says, you see, I would go to church, but look, I got to wake up early and this sounds like a chore. I pray every night and I truly believe in God. It's just that I find the Bible or at least the people reading the verse is kind of boring and the services too. Is it normal to be a Christian but not go to church? <laughs> okay, we've I've had conversations with my friends about this. Um, I feel like um, I'm gonna say from my own experience and just in general, um, I've done both. You know, I've been you know going to church every Sunday, and I've you know not gone to church. But I feel like the most important thing is to build a relationship because regardless if you go to church every Sunday. If you don't have that relationship, it's not going to be the connection. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's about the connection as an individual. So if you can go to church every Sunday, you can be standing up and dancing, give your 10 percent. But if you don't have that connection, you're not going to know as an individual what you how to maneuver in your life or you're not going to have that clarity that you need. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what life is about, like. Once you find that clarity as an individual and you know what your purpose is and what you need to be doing, everybody in your life is everything else is just going to make sense. Like, exactly. You know, so I feel like first is about the relationship. I feel like church is just to worship. You know, it's the worship and thank God for, you know, everything that he's doing for you. That's like celebrating him. But I feel like first and foremost, you have to have a relationship before yeah, because, yeah, look, people, sometimes people just go to church to look for a man. They feel like they have to. They go to gotta church for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, it's it's a misconception. They, they they going for all the wrong reasons, but it's all about the relationship. Okay. Well, look, so we're going to get into this little pop quiz. I like to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> but you did tweet something about uh, the Miseducation, which is Lauryn Hill's album. Mm-hmm. So are you a Lauryn Hill fan? Definitely. Oh, y'all heard that? She said definitely. So we're going to see. All right. So I'm <laughs> going to say a lyric. 
I'm not even. Go- I'm not even going to say it with the rhythm. I'm gonna just flat out just say the lyric, and you have to tell me what song it's from. And if you're a real fan, you should know. It don't even matter if I put on a little Uzi beat. You should know. All right? Okay. All right, so here it is. Don't be a hard rock when you really are a gym. Oh, yeah. Um, hold on. Come on, you no, know No, I do thing. know it. I just don't know. Hold on, I got to. <laughs> when you really are a gym, we girl. Um, uh, I can't think of the name of the Come song, on. but I know. I know. <laughs> I know it. I just can't think of it because she had on the doo wop. Is it doo wop? That thing, that yes. thing, that thing. Okay. okay. <laughs> I ain't going to do that thing. no more. That's all right. <laughs> all right. I'm not good. No, I'm not good with names. I swear I'm not good with all names. All right. But, okay, if you could tell me a lyric that comes after it, it'll be good if you can get the name. But if you yeah. can tell me a lyric that comes after it, I'll give it to you. <laughs> you put on the spot? Girl, yes. All right, yeah. wisdom is better than silver and gold. I was hopeless. Now I'm on Hope Road. Mm. All you gotta do is give me a lyric, <laughs> like something to come out there or before it. Uh, hold on, can you give me a melody or something? No. <laughs> if you're a real fan, you should know. I am a fan. <laughs> I am a fan. Um, I don't know. All right, it's called Lost Ones. Okay, okay. All right. My em- <laughs> my emancipation doesn't fit your equation. <laughs> Don't laugh. Lauren Hill be so disappointed. I know. She would be so hurt right now, but I swear I'm a fan. I swear I'm a fan. It's the same song. The lost ones. Oh. You just lost one. Okay, I ain't listened to that one a lot. But All right, yeah. this okay. You gotta know this one. This is this is a Lauren Hill song. All right, I wrote these words for everyone who struggles in their youth, who accept deception instead of what is true. Mm. Come on, girl. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. Listen. If you tweet about it, you gotta be about it. <laughs> and the words are damn it. Yes. yes. I'm so sorry. I don't All know. All right. Everything is everything. Okay. Mm, okay. <laughs> All right. This is the last. No. I'm gonna give you a bonus lyric. All right. This is the last one, real quick. Everyone told me to be smart. Look at your career, they say. Lauren, baby, use your head. But instead, I chose to use my heart. Mmm. Everybody failed my quizzes. <laughs> well, good. What well, that make me feel yeah, better? So it's not just you. Good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, to Zion. Uh, and you know, it, I remember, and I felt like I remember that from when she did the live. She did that live, didn't mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I, ain't, yeah. All right, I'm gonna give you a bonus one. No. <laughs> I'm like, no, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah this one, all right. If you get this one right, then you win it all. <laughs> Oh my god. I then we like can a- say we can come back and say you a Lauren Hill fan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I play my enemies like a game of chess where I rest, no stress. If you smoke cess less, I must confess my destiny's manifest. Oh. Dang, I wouldn't have known that one either. Is that do I is that the do I one? It's not. I don't know. <laughs> um, ready or not? Oh, dang. It's all good. Mm, we, I'm so look, sorry. so to recuperate, we're going to go on a small, short break, listen to a sister's music. <laughs> what, what song we about to listen to? A pity Party. Pity Party. Pity Party. Yeah. She be, nah, no, don't, don't announce it like that. Because you, she was just over here hype singing her song. She was getting her lyrics on. Yes, it's Pity Party. I hope y'all enjoy it. It's a song that I wrote. Uh, just pretty much trying to give people some inspiration. Like, even if life tr- beating you up, you know, I always try to find the positive. So, yes. Pity party. No pity. All right. <laughs> but when I let myself break down, to tell the truth, I had a breakthrough. Woo! Don't kill my vibe. I'm lucky to be alive. All I know All right, is we are back. You 
are still tuned into the Kickback DMV. We're on a new platform with Radio Dragon Radio Howard Community College, and I have with me Destiny the Chef. Ugh. Yes, I love it. <laughs> All right, so y'all know how to go through her Twitter, and we're gonna get into a segment called Peep That Tweet. But I don't know if you have like somebody trained you or something with Train. this tweet stuff, because it's like you don't really be tweeting stuff too personal. Like I sister was digging for days, <laughs> but it's like more so like retweets or places you're gonna be or stuff like that. So what's that about? Uh, well, I mean, I'm big on branding and marketing, Smart. so it's like I got all my pages connected. So, you know, I'm easily found, you know, everything is going to be on the same page, like, mm-hmm. as far as, like, you know, uh, it's, no, it's not going to be any inconsistency, pretty much, because I'm trying to make sure I build my fan base the right way. So, okay. yeah, everything's connected, so, yeah. All right, so let's yeah. get into, let me see. Let me, let's get into a little tweet. It's something simple, nothing crazy. Look at you. What did I tweet? <laughs> <laughs> no, it says, um, Aquarius is friendly, but keep their walls up until they actually know you. So I'm going to assume you're Aquarius. Really? No, I was joking. Yeah. Oh, okay. I <laughs> Look, I'm about to say, well, who are you tweeting about? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so is that true for you, that you keep your wall up until you actually know a person? Uh, I mean, I would say... I'm observant. I'm very observant first before I just, like, be a – before I'm an open book. But, honestly, I go off of energy and vibes. Like, mm. if I feel, like, your energy, I feel like we just got to connect or chemistry, then I probably will be an open book. But that's the thing. Like, I am an open book, so it's like I got to trust you. I got to feel like if I'm an open book with you, like, you know, what we talk about is what we talk about. Like, so has the music helped you open up more? Or you don't, I mean, because if you put in your feelings in your music, do you feel like when you're meeting somebody, it's a little more, huh, to just kind of, or you still, like, mm, reserve when it comes to that? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I don't know. A lot of the times, if people meet me as Destiny, they don't know Destiny the Chef. And if they meet me as Destiny the Chef, they don't know Destiny because it's like, Destiny the Chef is like the the kid that I wanted to be, like, growing up like she's the one that stands up for herself that you know says how she feels and you know doesn't care what anybody thinks like so yeah like that's like you know I don't know like a lot of the times like I said when people meet destiny if they just meet me outside of music you know they they be like whoa like destiny the chef like whoa like it's like almost like two different oh okay all right so it says the chef brand is all about sacrifice, being a visionary and believing in your abilities that you push. So what sacrifices have you had to make in doing this music? You know, everything that I talk about in my music is me, is me talking about the sacrifices I make. Like, Destiny the Chef, I feel like, I feel like God is using me as a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like my life is a sacrifice because I don't even feel like I enjoyed my life yet. Like, I feel like I haven't even started to enjoy it. Like, everything, like, my money, like, all my money goes into my music. Like, I don't even really go on vacations, none of that. Everything mm-hmm. is devoted to this music. Like, I put all my stuff in my little Ford Focus and, and you know, had, like, $20 to my name going to Atlanta. Like, wow. I literally, you know, I literally walk in faith, you know, that I know I'm doing this for a reason mm-hmm. and for a purpose. And it's been working out like that. But I left behind everything that I love, everything that I was like to do to come to Atlanta and just to, to live out this dream. Like, so. So you doing this it. like it's no turning back. Yeah. I didn't put all my eggs in one basket. Ain't no plan B. This the plan. This is it. This is the plan. I hear that. So this next tweet. All right. It says, I swear I didn't think I was going to make it to C18. So the C28 is total incomplete. That's crazy to hear like a female say. So why do you think you weren't going to make it to C18? Yeah, you be you 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 good. <laughs> <laughs> you be digging, <laughs> um, because I almost died at seventeen. I had a heart attack. Um, I wasn't doing good with my diabetes. I was in high school, so I wanted to be like everybody else. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't understand the significance of just being yourself, being different, and embracing the fact you know I'm diabetic and this is just what it is and embrace that it makes you who you are mm-hmm. you know and I didn't embrace those things so I was just 
being frivolous, you know, eating what everybody else was eating, drinking what everybody else was drinking, you know. Something yeah. small as a uh, fruitopia or something back in the day. Like, just, mm-hmm. you know, just being careless. And I had a heart attack and I almost lost my life. And, Yikes. Uh, yeah, like, it was scary. Like, and so just to be, I, I just think about, like, if I would have actually died at 17, mm-hmm. like, dang, like, I would have missed out on so much. Because I've, exactly. from 17 to, to where I'm at now, to 28, like, mm-hmm. I've learned so, so, so much about life and, you know, just God and, you know, how he's using me. I, I would have been super disappointed. I hear that. Like, if I would have lost out on those them 10 years, like, I would have been. Yeah, because yeah. when I be close to, like, a car accident, I'd be like, God, I'm not trying to die yet. Like, I got stuff right. to accomplish. Right, that's Chill how out. I hold, feel. Hold up. That's well, how let I me, be let feeling. Me, <laughs> let me survive that's through another this one. thing. Oh, my God, I feel like I'm at war when I'm in the car. Like, I feel like somebody's trying to take my life every Girl, day. Like, what? People are so careless. Ugh. All right, so I'm going to tie these two in together. And they were, like, four days apart, and I don't... Okay, are you single? Right now? Yes. No. Okay, so you were single when you did this. And so this is good, though, because I'm going to ask, is, did this man do this? Whatever. All right, Ooh. so it says, I also love a man who can serenade me. The, the one you got, he do that? Yeah. Definitely. For real? Yes. Girl, where you meet him at? The studio? <laughs> <laughs> no. But, um, yeah, like, I don't know. I just, I'm a, like, a hopeless romantic. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, I'm the type of person that I just, I believe in, um, like, courting and all of that. Like, I don't know. I got an old soul, I guess. I like, hear that. I like when people show you that they are interested in you. Mm-hmm. You know, not just, oh, uh, you know going out on a date or something like that i want i want you yeah i I want you to do some research like let me know that you you're interested you know because there's so many people in the world why why i give you my time exactly you know so it's like show interest yeah because then a couple days after that you and your friend you know y'all went and had a ball at vicky secrets you know picking stuff out for y'all future man oh uh, yeah that was my um cousin like we went to victoria's secret and we was just in there like I don't even, like, honestly, I don't even care about, like, stuff, stuff like, like that. that, no. But, I mean, my cousin do, do, so I just went with her. She's like, girl, pick some stuff. And I was like, okay. Girl, yes, one. But, look, right. now you got one. But, shoot, I'm single now. <laughs> <laughs> if you got a cousin, serenade me, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the last tweet, my beauty is way more than skin deep. So what do you feel like, you know, in doing this rapping that you are teaching women? you know, about beauty and loving themselves? Um, Like, I don't know. I just feel like um, I'm just, I've never been a surface person. I never mm-hmm. looked at myself and was like, oh, my God, like, you look so good. Like, I've always just been, I feel like beauty is who you are on the inside. Like, you know, your personality, your character, like, you know, just your characteristics of who you are, like your spirit. Like, I think a, your spirit makes you beautiful, like, not just, oh, what makeup you could put on and all of that. Because after a while, that fade. Like, Girl, but, yes. Like, but it's so many, so many beautiful women. It's sickening. It, it, it's like, it, what it do you is. have to offer? Exactly. So it's like, other than you putting on makeup and making your hair look cute and dressing nice, like, what else do you have to offer? Yes. So it's like, I try to, like, I try to tell people, like, honestly, if you think, outside mm-hmm. is beautiful and I feel you know sorry f- that you don't even get to see my inside because it's even more beautiful like yeah you know so I, I feel like whoever you know get to get to know me is you lucky be, yep you lucky. <laughs> <laughs> look they feel it's about to be hurt because we are about to get out of here but I'm really really happy that you join us yes, today I'm at the so, kickback yes. so where can we follow you find you are you having any shows coming up new music like Yes, I we have. want more. Yeah, yes, you can follow me on everything at Destiny the Chef, D E S T I N Y D A C H E F. That's YouTube, IG, Facebook, Snapchat, all of those Reverb Nation, all of those, um, you know, um, social networks. You can follow me Twitter, Destiny the Chef, and um, I have uh, I'm signed to Beat Billionaire, who's um, with MMG. Um, so it's going to be a lot of MMG collaborations. Yeah. Um, she doing yeah, it. Yeah. I, I got a, well, he put it out there. So I got a collab with Wale come in. Um, okay. 
yeah, so I'm excited. Um, Ross and all of them excited about me, so I'm excited because I never, I just feel like at this point that I know all of this stuff, like all those sacrifices was worth it. All those times where I was broke, hardly had no food to eat, put all my stuff and left all my friends behind my family. Like I feel like it's worth it to have people understand my vision. Yes. So you're going to see new videos. We got a BDM, which is um billion dollar market. Follow that. That's the label I'm with. We mm-hmm. got new videos coming out. We got a mixtape hosted by DJ Scream, DJ Sam Sneak, um, all of those MMG affiliates. Um, so a uh, mixtape. We got a BDM album coming. Mm-hmm. And I got a project called Hear Us, Stories from the Struggle. That's more not like a radio project, but more of like I want you to kind of get to know me a little deeper mm-hmm. and understand who I am and why I even do music and what I represent. So that's coming 2017. Okay. So, yes. Yes. So make sure y'all follow her, Destiny the Chef. Y'all will not be disappointed. She's so yes. real and so authentic. I'm so happy that she came. Thank but yeah, make you. sure you tune in to us next week. The Kickback DMV at Dragon Radio. Have a great day. <laughs> Stop. 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 Stop.